If you've ever worked with a dark species of wood, you know that sometimes you just can't see the line. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? No. Now, I've tried a bunch of different options out there. There's thicker lines, thinner lines, different colors. There's white charcoal. There's so many different things. And I won't say I've tried them all, but I definitely have tried quite a few. So that's what we're going to look at today. I'm not necessarily going to tell you exactly what you need to use because it depends on maybe personal preference, your vision, how thick you want that line to be. Are you rough marking? Are you doing joinery? But I want to show you all these different options because they all have benefits, pros and cons. All right. So first up, I have the classic piece of chalk. Now, of course, chalk is very brittle. It breaks fairly easily, but it sure does make a pretty obvious obvious line. So we use chalk once in a while for rough marking lumber. If we're breaking parts down. Works pretty well for that, but you're not going to get any fine detail with something like a piece of chalk. Now this is something that was fairly new to me. It's a Revmark marker in white. It's kind of interesting because it's basically just like a white Sharpie. And you can see you get a nice, it's a fairly fat line, but it's a nice consistent line. Though I don't know how practical it is for marking lumber with some sort of a marker, right? The lumber just absorbs all the juice and it's going to dry out pretty quickly. Now here's another pencil that's going to give you kind of some cool options. This is Pika's uh, Big Dry, it's called, and there are different colors that you can use for the lead. But particularly the white is kind of handy because you can go in one direction and get a finer line. You can actually even sharpen this up so it's a blade point really. Or you can go this way and get a wider line. This is also a pretty good option for marking up lumber. Next up we have two very similar looking pencils. These are both made by General. This is a charcoal pencil. The charcoal is kind of nice. It writes really well. It feels good on the surface, but I find that the tip is a little bit more fragile. Here's another one. This is a, um, it's meant to be on all different types of surfaces, but it draws more like a crayon. It feels like a waxier material here. And I do find that the point is a little bit more durable. And you can kind of see that right here. Well, they both broke. In the past, I have <laughs> great jobs, bags. I've done that in the past, and the this one has held up a little bit better than the charcoal, but obviously, as you can see, sometimes it just ain't gonna matter. But I will say that the charcoal is a little bit brighter, and the whatever this is made from is a, a little bit dimmer. So next up, I have this refillable Statler mechanical pencil. This is actually, this is one that I had in mechanical drawing class in high school. They have different color material here. I, I wanna say the word lead, you guys know what I mean. It's not made out of lead, but whatever it's made out of, this is sort of a baby blue that shows up fairly well. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to sharpen this to a point. These are a little bit dull, but you can get a pretty fine line. And then I have two other colors with orangey red and then a darker blue. But in this case, I think the light blue is the one that's the most visible. Next up, this is an interesting one. This is. Uh, kind of like a gel pen. They make a few different brands. This is Art and & Fly. And you can see it actually makes a nice crisp line. Now the thing is, ink pens and gel pens, they no are notorious for drying up and kind of doing weird things on the surface. So there's times, like this came out really good, but there are times where I'll draw and it just kind of skips a little portion. While this looks really good, it's nice and crisp. It's a fine line. I do find that it is a little problematic over time as it starts to age a little bit. You just don't get as good uh, consistent of a line. Now, Next up, we get into more mechanical pencil style. And you know, for me, the ultimate is half millimeter lead. Well, it's really hard to find white in half millimeter. So on this side, I've actually got white 0.7 millimeter lead, and that actually produces, you know, a decent line. It's easy to read, it's nice and consistent, which is why I like mechanical pencils in the first place. Not too bad, maybe a little bit thick, but it's it's still okay. Now, Pentel has a red color that they do have in half millimeter. And as you'll see, it, it can be a little bit fragile. Um, so it's going to break depending on the grain of the wood. It's a little bit more visible than a regular pencil, but I, I don't know, that's, that, that's not a great line. It might depend on what light you view it in, but this is probably something I'm not gonna use very often. And then finally over here, we have our standard pencil line. I have a half millimeter and 0.7. And what's interesting about pencil line, standard pencil, is that it kind of depends on the angle you view it. If you get the light to reflect just right, man, you could see it perfectly. But if you go in the wrong spot, you can't see anything. And this is the whole reason we're doing this in the first place is because this is not ideal for most of us. Now summing this up for you is a little bit tricky. Like I said before, it depends on your personal preferences and what you're trying to accomplish. But I can tell you what I use and maybe that'll help you out. So when we do rough marking on lumber, we're marking our parts out, we're doing rough milling. I typically will use the general pencils because they're standard size and I can use my electric sharpener to sharpen them or this little 
peak, well, it's big actually, this Pika pencil thingamajig, um, those are great for the rough marks in rough lumber. If I'm trying to be a little bit more detailed, the truth is I actually still go to my standard pencils because I have good lighting in the shop and I can kind of angle things and see that pretty well. And if I can't see it, I know if I just kind of move a little bit, it'll start to sort of fluoresce. I'll get that reflection in my eye and I can see it. The other thing is the way that I do my woodworking. A lot of times I'm sneaking up on measurements. I'm not so dependent on that line being absolutely perfect. So my method of woodworking means I don't have to necessarily have a perfect nailed shot every single time. I work my way to the perfect dimension. If I really did want to see it a little bit better and hey, you know, your eyes aren't going to stay great forever. Um, I've got a light prescription now, but I could still see pretty well. But if I started to get a little bit more of a failed vision, I probably would go for this 0.7 white lead. It's very consistent, doesn't break that often, and you could see it much better than a standard lead pencil or mechanical pencil. So as you can see, there's a lot of options here, and I think this is just a sampling. So what I want from you guys is to let me know what things you rely on to make marks on dark wood. I would love to know. There's, there's probably things I've never seen before and I wasn't able to find in my research. So let me know what you find down in the comments. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.